you guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, Never Marry a Feminist. And what I really like about this article, guys, is that unlike articles I've done before on this subject, this article is written by a woman. And so you know it, it says a whole different thing when a woman is writing an article telling guys, you know, beware. And, you know, guys, in other articles I've done talking about this subject, it goes into the obvious things about what happens when you marry or get involved with someone like this. All the drama with regarding to politics, you know, politics are always being talked about. Score is being kept on who did what, who paid for what, who opened the door, who texted who. You know, never-ending drama. Because if you're going to be in a relationship, if you're going to do that, it ought to actually be something enjoyable, at least in the beginning. But when you get involved with someone like this, it's never going to be a never-ending drama of bullshit. And I, I've mentioned before in other videos, I had two friends in recent years that got involved with women like this, and it was a never-ending battle. One of the guys actually moved in with her, and that's what did it for him. That's when it got him out. And, and by the way, he looks at that as a good thing now because if he probably didn't move in with her, he may have actually proposed to her and waited till after they're married to move in with her. So imagine that. And now, by the way, that guy is dating a very feminine girl because he couldn't take after what he'd been through. He'll never be with someone like that again. But anyhow, this article, guys, focuses more about how if you get married to someone like this, what it's going to be like in terms of how they're going to, not just about all the drama with regards to what she's going to be talking about in terms of politics and keeping score, but in terms of that dynamics in the relationship, in the marriage, where nowadays, guys, instead of about being about equality, which is how they try to sell people on, it's now about trying to make the genders equal in terms of uh, behavior and how you act, okay? And we see this all the time in movies and television, how they're trying to mold men to be soft and emotional and in touch with their feminine side, and trying to mold women to be in touch with their masculine side. So everything's all out of whack. And in relationships like this, it's always doomed to fail. I mean, let's be honest here. In my opinion, and I've been saying this since day one, all marriages in this day and age are doomed to fail for so many reasons. But when they start doing this, when they start having the husband take on both feminine roles, but also feminine personality traits, and the wife switches to masculine roles and masculine personality traits, that's it. It's over. And I've done articles on this. So this is what she really gets into. And it's very interesting. So again, the title starts off, excuse me, the article starts off saying, I have a proudly progressive male friend who married a effinist. I got to speak in code now, guys, otherwise I'll take the video down. Who married a effinist some years ago and asked him to take her name. They didn't end up going that route, but my friend seriously considered it. Any of you guys watching right now that are married and you took your wife's last name, email me your address because I'm going to come to your house and slap you upside the head. Because that's, that's the absolute last thing any guy should do. And I don't know any guys that have done that yet, but if I do, I'm going to slap him upside the head. I thought of him when I read this recent article headlined, He Said Yes, Why Aren't More Women Proposing to Their Boyfriends? And when I came across this new Booking.com commercial that shows a woman proposing to a man. Goes on, when it comes to love and marriage, couple, uh, excuse me, couples typically fall into one or two groups. Those who embrace tradition and those who do not. Those in the latter group believe conventional sex roles place women in an inferior position and thus seek to make men and women equal or interchangeable in order to correct this supposed problem. In other words, they're effinists. And there's, a, there's different quotes throughout the article, guys. I'm, I'm going to read this. This one, this one quote says, I take every opportunity I can to smash the patriarchy, writes Molly Bluduff and Del Cato, author of the article above. And my proposal felt like the perfect opportunity. Article continues saying, Anyone who enters marriage believing the institution is oppressive to women will never be successfully married. <clears throat> Your attitude or mindset toward anything, but especially towards marriage, will make or break your success with it. If you believe in sex roles are a result of the patriarchy designed to disempower women, rather than on what they're actually based on, the biological differences between the sexes, and your relationship is doomed. A successful marriage relationship depend, de, excuse me, 
I'm off this morning. Bear with me, guys. <clears throat> a successful marriage relationship demands a deep understanding of male and female nature. A strong marriage is in fact predicted on sexual inequality or on how much couples let the differences shine. Unfortunately, many couples don't realize this until years later when children come along. Because when we remove reproduction from the table, men and women do live very similar lives and thus appear equal or the same. But once they become parents, sex differences become glaring. And a quote here is saying, Almost every one of my coaching clients learn this lesson the hard way. Their marriages are mired in conflict for pretty much the same reason. They believed in sexual equality and approached their relationship accordingly. Now, what she's talking about, what she's going to get into, guys, and I'm going to focus on this for a second, is she's talking about different, in terms of marriages and roles and relationships, masculine and feminine energy, okay? We all have them. And the you-know-what movement has been doing everything it's, it's in its power everything it can to try to switch that up because they don't like the fact that how nature has designed us. They think that women can act like men and men can act like women and they've been trying to mold us. And to give you guys some examples of this, you know, masculine energy, generally speaking, is about drive, ambition, being competitive, decisiveness, being assertive, being dominant, taking charge, overcoming obstacles, uh, being rational, things like that, okay? Feminine energy traditionally is nurturing, okay? <clears throat> Bonding, connecting with people or your, someone you're in a relationship with. Uh, being emotional, opening up about your feelings and all that. Being passive, being submissive, letting the guy be the leader. Uh, also, levels of being unsure, indecisive. That's feminine energy, Okay, and what happens is if you have a guy start to act that way, it's going to turn off feminine women. Okay, so if you have a woman that acts that way and she meets a guy and goes on a date with him and he acts more fem feminine, more feminine energy than masculine energy, it's going to turn her off because it's like for her, because she's a straight feminine woman, it's like her being on out on a date with a chick and she wants to be out with a guy, a man. On the flip side, if you have a man that is definitely in his masculine and dis and displays all those traits I described, and he goes out on a date with a strong woman, because we've done our I've done videos about how these strong women don't they, they they think that guys can't handle their strength. When the woman behaves the same way as the guy, she has all these masculine traits. It's a total turnoff, okay? Because it's like the guy's being out on a date with another guy, and again. A straight guy doesn't want to be out on a date with a guy. He wants to be out with a feminine woman. And, and so many women can't get this. They don't get it. Or they may get it, but they don't want to get it because they've been so brainwashed by all this horse shit by the you-know-what movement. And so when you have this in a relationship where the woman takes on not only the masculine traits in terms of personality, but also the roles, and the guy becomes more feminine and he takes on the female roles screws everything up. I've done videos on this where, you know, a woman, she earns more money, so she works, and she brings home the bacon, and the guy stays home with the kids, and that's it. It's over because she stops losing respect for the guy. She stops sleeping with him, starts treating him like crap, and usually ends up cheating, and the marriage ends, and he's not attracted to her because she not only is in the more masculine role, she's also acting masculine. See what I mean? So it's a recipe for disaster. And I know I've gotten off the article here, but I thought it was important to spend a few minutes explaining that. Because I know I've got a lot of new people in the last couple weeks. All right, article goes on to say, No one told men and women have different body parts for a reason. Because they're designed to fit like a puzzle. If you want the puzzle to fit outside the bedroom as well, you need to know how the opposite sex thinks and why they behave the way they do. The mind of a man and the mind of a woman are as different as their genitals. <clears throat> exactly. And not just their mind, but also their emotions and all that, and all the traits that go along with it. And she says, polarity in a relationship is the engine that, that makes it move. Masculine energy conquers and co conjugates. It likes to do things. Feminine energy nurtures and verbalizes. It likes to talk and to feel. And these are a few things, guys, but I went into more detail earlier. That's why feminine energy is the receiver of masculine energy. It's why men typically make the first move on a relationship and why the man proposes to the woman rather than the other way around. 
Well, you know, the, the uh, Ephenists and those of the you-know-what group, they, they encourage women to do the proposal. I can't imagine, like, being dating someone, being in a relationship, and all of a sudden the girl proposes to you. I would be, I'd run for the hills. After I stop being shocked in, in place, I don't know any guys I've been proposed to, but I'm willing to bet those my two friends that were with those two women that were 100% Ephenists, I bet you eventually they would have proposed, and they probably would have gone along with it. And the one guy probably would have taken her last name. She probably would have wanted that. Fortunately, he got rid of her. Uh, the male acts, and the female responds. When the roles are reversed, everything falls apart. Yes, most couples today are malleable when it comes to work and family matters. Some overlap is inevitable and even good. But the more men and women move away from their masculine and feminine cores, the harder or the more impossible it will be to make the relationship work. Yeah, okay, you know, a guy can uh, cook dinner. Okay, a guy can do some dishes. That's not a big deal. But if a guy is doing 100% of all the, you know, housework, what was in the past, consider 100%, you know, the feminine role, and behaves in a feminine way, that's going to turn his wife off if she is feminine, okay? And he's not going to feel right if he's acting that way, you know? But again, if he does some dishes or if he cooks some uh, fried chicken or whatever it happens to be, it's not that big a deal. But if it's all the things, you know, on the other side, obviously she can work, but if she's making more money and she's higher status than him and she's behaving with all these masculine traits I talked earlier, again, that's going to turn him off. And nobody's going to be having sex because there's no attraction. And it's just one negative thing after the other until everything's kaput. Uh, another quote saying, Sexual equality insists that it doesn't matter who does what, but it does matter. Indeed, it's no coincidence my friend, who nearly took his wife's name, <laughs> is now divorced. Big surprise. I saw it coming a mile away. And for poor Prince Harry, whose wife is so committed to feminism, <clears throat> she got excited about the idea that adherence to it starts in the womb. It's just a matter of time. Poor Prince Harry. I've heard... Pretty much remember account, that guy's a good guy. And then for whatever reason, <clears throat> he met Meghan Markle, was attracted to her, and now he's stuck with her. And the guy just, whenever you see pictures of him, she's always got this big smile on her face, and he looks miserable. I mean, and I've, I've read some articles. I've never done a video on it, but I've read articles about him, and obviously he's very unhappy and just all this. You know, I think it's only a matter of time before he kicks her to the curb. But I'm willing to bet you she wasn't like this early on. I'm willing to bet you that she was completely different. He probably banged her in every single room in Buckingham Palace before he put a ring on her finger. But once that ring is on her finger, bait and switch, different ball game. Maybe I'm wrong, but who knows. But I really hope to hear one day that basically he's out of there and gets back to his life. <clears throat> these, these folks are in a fight with human nature, and that never ends well. Men and women don't need to think and behave the same in order to be equal in value. They need only work together toward the same goal using their respective strengths, temperaments, and desires. Forcing men and women into the same box in order to score political points when they naturally want to go in different directions will almost always pull them apart. Absolutely. It may take 10 or more years to happen, but rest assured, it will happen. I believe, guys... As things have been going, you know, as more and more people are becoming aware of these things, more and more people are talking about it. Obviously, channels with videos about these subjects come up and educating men. <clears throat> the pendulum, which has swung way to the other side out of whack, will start moving back. Okay? But it's going to take time. This author, the woman, she said 10 years. I think it could take longer. I think it really could take 20, maybe 25. Being honest here. You know, we still have ways to go. That's why I encourage you guys to talk about this. I encourage you to, you know, be a good role model around you in terms of if you have children, if you have sons or nephews, or if you're a grandfather and you have grandchildren, if you're an older brother and you have younger brothers, be a strong masculine man, okay? And I'm not saying you're being, you know, a dick, but just exhibit all these traits that I've been talking about, you know, and constantly doing things to also improve yourself in every, every area of your life. 
and set that good example. And by talking about it and so forth and not tolerating all this crap that's been going on, drawing a line in the sand, things just start to go back to the way they were. Again, it ain't going to happen overnight, guys. We still got ways to go. But give it time, and hopefully then it'll get back to the way things were because it is just absolutely ridiculous out there. And believe me, it is an uphill battle. We got I got plenty of enemies that come on here all the time. Interestingly, not just women, but also men hating on me and sending me these nasty emails and everything like that. But you know what? If that's happening, I'm doing something right. And I, get, I guarantee other guys that have channels like mine that talk about some of the similar subjects and so forth, I know based on what they've said and reading comments, they get flooded with it as well. So, but all right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.